Hello students. Now the topic we are going to discuss is hematics. Hematics are the substances required in the formation of blood. Most important substances required in the formation of blood are iron, vitamin B12, folic acid and erythropoietin. Now for the purpose of simplicity and easy understanding, this topic is covered in six parts that is six videos. First part uh, that is the first video deals with introduction to hematics and the process of erythropoiesis. That is the process of formation of red blood cells. Process of erythropoiesis helps us understand how iron, vitamin B12, folic acid and erythropoietin are essential for the formation of red blood cells and how their deficiency results in anemia. Second video that is part 2 covers physiology of iron that is absorption, transport, metabolism and physiological functions and excretion of iron. Third video that is part 3 covers iron preparations that is oral and parenteral iron preparations and acute iron poisoning that is iron overload. We will discuss symptoms and treatment of iron overload. Fourth video deals with physiology of vitamin B12 that is absorption, transport, metabolism and physiological functions of vitamin B12 and oral and parenteral vitamin B12 preparations. Fifth video deals with physiology of folic acid that is absorption, transport, metabolism and physiological functions of folic acid and its oral and parenteral preparations. Sixth video that is the last video in the series covers pharmacology of erythropoietin a hormone produced by kidneys and its role in the formation of RBC. This is the third video that is hematics part 3 in the series of uh, videos on the topic hematics. Uh, as we all know hematics are the substances required in the formation of RBCs. Uh, the topic of today's discussion is the pharmacology of uh, iron preparations and uh, acute iron poisoning. Now uh, all of us know that uh, iron is essential for the synthesis of red blood cells in the bone marrow and iron is primarily required for the synthesis of hemoglobin. Deficiency of iron produces iron deficiency anemia. So today we are discussing oral and parenteral iron preparations. Iron therapy is indicated in the treatment of iron deficiency anemia. Uh, iron, uh, first let's discuss oral iron preparations. Now oral uh, route is the preferred route of iron administration and uh, oral iron preparations are of two types, ferrous salts and ferric salts. Ferrous salts are preferred over ferric salts because ferrous salts are dissociable and since they are dissociable they are easily absorbable in the intestinal mucosa and they are also inexpensive. Ferrous salts uh, possess higher iron content and are better absorbed. Some oral iron preparations are ferrous sulfate. Hydrated ferrous sulfate contains 20% iron while the dried ferrous sulfate salt contains 32% iron. Now ferrous sulfate is the most preferred oral preparation. It is the cheapest uh, but often it produces metallic taste in the mouth. Other preparations are ferrous gluconate, ferrous fumarate, colloidal ferric hydroxide, Carbonyl iron. Carbonyl iron is absorbed from intestine over a long time, uh, but its bioavailability is only three fourth of the ferrous sulfate. Uh, adverse effects of oral iron. Uh, adverse effects of oral iron are dependent on elemental iron content. Uh, common side effects are epigastric pain, heartburn, nausea, vomiting, bloating, uh, staining of teeth. Uh, by liquid preparations and thus liquid preparations are recommended to be put on the back of tongue, tongue and swallowed. Oral preparations uh, uh, like ferrous sulfate they can produce a metallic taste and apart from this other adverse effects are uh, colic uh, then uh, these oral preparations they can produce constipation and diarrhea. Now constipation is more common and uh, constipation or diarrhea are caused due to alteration of intestinal flora by these iron preparations. Now parenteral iron preparations are indicated if oral 
uh, iron is not tolerated if it leads to excess of diarrhea or constipation uh, malabsorption malabsorption of iron due to chronic inflammation of intestinal mucosa and uh, uh, parenteral iron preparations they have preferred or they are uh, suggested in severe iron deficiency uh, for example due to excessive uh, bleeding and uh, parenteral iron is administered along with erythropoietin erythropoietin we know is a hormone which is produced by the kidney uh, so these iron preparations they are administered along with erythropoietin now normally erythropoietin induces rapid erythropoiesis which increases the iron demand and therefore uh, iron supplements are given along with erythropoietin now some parenteral iron preparations are uh, the most common is the iron dextran it's a high molecular weight uh, colloidal solution containing 50 mg elemental iron per ml it is the only preparation that can be injected intravenous as well as intramuscular uh, it is the most preferred parenteral preparation and uh, as uh, uh, dextran is antigenic Anaphylactic reaction can occur with iron dextran, but uh, the frequency of occurrence is rare. Another iron uh, parenteral preparation is iron uh, sorbitol citric acid. Uh, it's a low molecular weight complex. Uh, it can be injected only by intramuscular route. Now, even with the uh, recommended intramuscular doses, Incidences of ventricular tachycardia, atrioventricular block, hypotension, flushing are high. And thus this uh, formulation is not currently recommended. Another uh, parenteral preparation is the ferrous sucrose. It's a newer formulation. Uh, the, it has a high molecular weight. It is a high molecular weight complex of uh, iron hydroxide with sucrose. Uh, it's safer than the older formulations and it is injected by um, intravenous route. The incidence of hypersensitivity reaction is very low and other side effects are also very mild. Another parenteral preparation is a ferric carboxymaltose. Now ferric carboxymaltose is the latest formulation of iron in which ferric hydroxide core is stabilized by a carbohydrate shell. It is injected either by intravenous injection or it is administered as intravenous infusion. And uh, due to the lack of safety data, it is not recommended for children less than 14 years of age. Uh, it produces mild side effects like pain at the site of injection and rashes. Uh, but uh, the incidence of uh, anaphylaxis is rare. Uh, now let's uh, talk about the adverse effects of the parenteral iron preparation. Uh, short term effects are the uh, dyspnea, headache, flushing, chest pain, nausea, amesis, bronchospasm, fever, urtic area and anaphylaxis. Uh, the incidence of anaphylaxis is rare. Uh, it is about 0.1% to 0.6%. Then uh, delayed reactions include uh, myalgia that is a pain in muscles, arthralgia that is a pain in the joints, phlebitis. Uh, inflammation of vein because of the parenteral administration, lymph adenopathy due to the that is enlargement of lymph node due to the deposition of iron. Complications of intramuscular administration include chronic pain at the site of injections, skin staining that is a local skin staining, uh, formation of abscess that is the formation of uh, uh, painful swollen lump, uh, sarcoma formation that is uh, there can be the formation of tumor as well. Uh, so this is all about the parenteral oral and uh, parenteral iron preparations now let's talk about the acute iron poisoning in brief now acute iron poisoning refers to iron overload and it occurs due to administration of iron preparations in high doses it is rare in adults however it is common in infants and children now manifestations of acute iron poisoning are vomiting abdominal pain then uh, hematemesis uh, that is the uh, uh, vomiting of blood, diarrhea, cyanosis, acidosis, convulsions and uh, finally shock and death. Treatment, uh, the first uh, and the most important uh, treatment option is to induce vomiting or gastric lavage uh, with sodium bicarbonate solution in order to prevent absorption of iron in order to remove uh, iron from the, uh, from the GIT tract that is a gastrointestinal tract. 
Now, sodium bicarbonate makes the iron insoluble, so that the iron is not absorbed. Uh, then second uh, um, option is to administer egg yolk and milk orally to complex uh, iron. This will also prevent absorption of iron. Now, if iron is already absorbed in the blood, then iron chelating agents are administered. Desferioxamine is the uh, is a chelating agent of cho of choice and it uh, binds to the absorbed iron. Alternatively, uh, use DTPA or calcium additate as a chelating agent to chelate the iron and to uh, remove the iron from the body. Uh, so this is all about the pharmacology of oral and parenteral iron preparations. Uh, and uh, we have also discussed manifestations and treatment of iron overload that is the uh, acute iron poisoning. Uh, if you find the session helpful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. You can ask your doubts in the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching the video.